Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Harriet Chan, and I'm a volunteer with the uh, San Francisco Bay Area chapter of Better Investing. And I'm here this afternoon to assist Better Investing and the San Francisco Public Library um, in the campaign to design to encourage individuals of all background to start a lifetime investing program in stocks or mutual funds. Next slide. Um, again, my name is Harriet Chan. This is my email, skcots at yahoo.com. The skcots is the word stock spelled backwards. Okay. Um, next screen is the disclaimer. So, uh, as mentioned by Doreen, uh, this presentation is for education uh, purposes. Um, I would advocate that people become active investors uh, and you should always do your own research. Uh, peace of mind is what you get when you do your own research. Okay, for today's agenda, next screen. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit about who is, uh, is better investing, uh, how to access value line and what is value line. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, value line section one and three and the company reports and a summary and question. Now the goal of this class is to show you how to access value line at the San Francisco main library. Um, we're gonna highlight and find uh, some parts of the value line. I'll share a brief description of some of the key value line items. Now, due to time, uh, we will not go into details. Uh, many of the definitions and sections, um, we do cover more of this in the classes offered by Better Investing. Um, I want to say that there's no magic behind good investing. Virtually anyone can be successful. Uh, we will add, however, that even the stock picking wizard of Peter Lynch would be impressed of how much more easily you can put into the stock market to work as a member of Better Investing. Uh, I have volunteered for uh, five years to teach third grade math. And basically that's all you really need that to, you just need to know how to add, subtract, multiply, division and percentages. Um, I just, I do want to mention that when I taught this class in person, this class usually takes three hours. Today, we only have one hour. Uh, so I'm going to introduce you the online version of Value Line and uh, how you can log into the San Francisco Library and get your Value Line online and do some studying uh, at your own pace. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to email me. Next screen. Next screen. Who we are. Better Investing is a nonprofit. We are volunteer based. So everybody in the San Francisco Bay Area chapter of Better Investing are volunteers. Uh, basically, uh, a lot of our directors were all successful investors. And we just want to share our information. Uh, we are member driven. Uh, we make no commissions and we make no stock recommendation. And www.betterinvesting.org is our website. Um, okay, let's. Uh, as we go through the presentation today, please make a note of any questions you have and we can go over at some stopping points. Our mission in better investing. Uh, basically, we just want to create long-term investors through education, uh, through the resources we have and the tools and to give you support. Um, uh, we do want to encourage you to be active investors um, to get the reward, but more importantly, peace of mind. It really reduces your stress. Uh, with this pandemic, we all need to find ways 
multiple ways of, of streams of income, whether by investing in stock, dividend investing, real estate, have multiple streams of income makes us less vulnerable. This is Peter Litch. Uh, he was saying that all you need is fifth grade math, but I've been investing for 40 years and I would say you only need third grade math. So, uh, but you actually need to do the math, okay? So I wanna say that, you know, when you do the math, do the dollar signs and do the percentages. Now, you need a library card. So when I did this last year, you had to be a resident of San Francisco. So they have just uh, updated me and said, you don't, to get a San Francisco library card, all you need to be is a resident uh, of California. Um, so that's great, but you do have to go into a library. Um, so I, I have a question uh, for the librarian. Um, it used to be that they can apply online. Is that not true? Or has that changed? So I can answer that. Um, you can fill out the application online, but you have to visit any of our locations, so the main or any branch, to present your ID so that we can verify that it's you. And then um, if necessary, if your ID has your old address, bring a piece of mail with you, like a utility bill. And once we verify your ID and your address, then we'll issue the card. So you do have to make that one appearance at one of our uh, branch libraries or the main library. Okay, great. It, it, I would say it's worth the trip. <laughs> uh, okay, next slide. So the following uh, San Francisco branch libraries have hard copies of the value line. Um, so in the main library on Larkin Street, uh, it's on the fourth floor uh, behind uh, what they call the page desk. Okay. I started out many, many years ago using the hard copy and I, I tend to, just because I'm familiar with it, I still tend to prefer that. Okay, is there any questions before we dive in here? There is one question. Yeah. Um, well, I see one and I don't know if JP sees others, let's see. Okay, there is a question about getting a library card. Is the same is the same when I'm a resident of San Francisco and I can get a South San Francisco library card? That's San Mateo County, so it's a different system. Um, I at one time had a card at one of the Peninsula libraries, so I think they extend it to all Californians, but I'm not sure. And that was years ago, so I would contact the South South San Francisco library to see if you're eligible to get one of their cards as well. Because um, I, I don't know if it works both ways, you know, as far as uh, getting cards with different systems, but usually they'll, they'll open it up to Bay Area residents. So I would just contact um, the South San Francisco or, you know, the Peninsula Library System to see what they need to get from you to get a card. But for San Francisco, that one I can confidently answer. If you live in California, you can get one of our cards. You just have to visit us. Okay, next slide. So this is the, um, front page. So you type in uh, sfpl.org, okay? Uh, and where you wanna go is the learn, the research and learn. Okay, next screen, you wanna go to the articles and database. Next line, uh, it brings up the, the alphabet and you click on the V, press enter. And the first thing that pops up is the value line. So you wanna click on value line and it comes up with my user ID and my password, okay? And so all you need to do is to press the and submit that button. And this will become your first uh, screen of the value line. Uh, 
where you will be going, the browse and search. Everything I'm sharing with you is in the investment education, the red box there, you see the tab, investment education. So everything that I'm saying, everything that I'm teaching is in this section. Um, it's a wonderful resource. So allocate some time. Um, we only have an hour. So if you go, once you sign on, you can browse that and poke around um, as long as you would like. Okay. The other thing that I want to mention on the screen is that there is the Dow 30 listing. The Dow 30 listing is free. Um, whether you log on to the library or you just log on to Value Line. Um, the Dow Jones 30, if you don't know, is the 30 blue chips uh, US companies. Um, okay, so it's a good place to start if you're new to investing, large companies that make money. Um, and, and another place for education is uh, sites are like large brokerage firms. Most, most brokerage firms like Fidelity and Charles Schwab um, does not charge commission to buy or sell stocks anymore. Decades ago, it used to cost $155 for a transaction. And a few years ago, um, that's been uh, dropped down to zero. So um, if you open a, a, a brokerage account, uh, the best way is to automate your investing, transfer a set, a set amount of dollars owed to your brokerage firm on regular intervals. Next screen. So you're gonna, uh, over here, you're gonna type in, in that little box, J and J, which stands for Johnson and Johnson, and you press enter. Next screen. So this is what comes up. So on the online format, uh, a value line, um, what is value line? Value line is just a report card on a company. Um, they do fundamental analysis, which means they will look at the company books and see how well they are doing. In fundamental analysis, PE is very important. Now, what is PE? P stands for price of the stock and E stands for earnings. So you're looking at the ratio between the price of the stock and the earnings. The other way, another way of looking at it, that E, it could be um, current earnings and future uh, earnings is also very important. Um, if you look at the yellow box in there, this uh, was dated 10 20, 2020, and the stock price was $143.97. The trailing uh, PE is 16.7. What we mean by trailing is that it's the last 12 months, uh, but it's also very important to figure out what the forward PE what it's gonna earn the next 12 months. Um, and so you have something to compare it to. Okay. The, now, um, the relative PE uh, for the last FY, FY stands for fiscal is 84. So if it compares Johnson & Johnson against value line 1700 stocks, so Johnson & Johnson is not a hot stock. It's dull and boring, <laughs> but it's a steady eddy stock. And dull and boring has its appeal. Now the current yield of the dividend is currently 2.78% at this time. Um, uh, better, it's paying a lot better than money market fund. J&J, uh, &J, Johnson & Johnson has an increase each year, the dividend since 1963. Uh, they are a member of the aristocrat dividend companies, companies that have increased their dividends for a minimum of 25 years. Uh, tomorrow, I will be uh, teaching a class called uh, Dividend uh, Reinvesting. Um, tomorrow at three o'clock, 
okay, at the library. So, uh, okay. And what I did was um, why I developed the classes. I hear a lot of people said they don't have time and they don't have money. So dividend investing is a passive strategy, but you still uh, are in the stock market. And I'll show you historical data for 42 years. And so the average returns much, much better than treasury bills, savings account or CDs. Um, um, looking forward to sharing that data with you. Okay, so um, I had created uh, for $50 a month on Johnson & Johnson, you could have invested $600 a year. And in 18 years, you went at over $100,000 and in 24 years, 190,000. So that's pretty uh, a good return for $50 a month and not much research. And like I said, it is a passive, passive investing strategy, but you're still in the stock market. Um, like yesterday when I presented about how to start a investment club, uh, it's in the stock market where you can really make your money grow. Okay, now I wanna go back to that um, yellow square there box and um, over on the right hand side, there's the blue. Okay, if you click on that, it will tell you uh, an I'm sorry, Harriet, am I on the right slide? Uh, uh, back, back one up. Back, okay. Okay. Like that? Right, yeah. That explains to you uh, what the 18 month uh, price line is. So this, is a, this slide was created in October of 2020 and the stock was at 143. Today, the stock, uh, Johnson & Johnson is at 177, I believe. So if you figure out the math, 177 minus the 143, um, it's about a 25% return. Uh, and so it's been 18 months. Um, so that's a pretty good return, 25%, I think. Okay, uh, next slide. Now, the red box, safety. Johnson Johnson is ranked number one, okay? There are 100 stocks that have a ranking of number one. Uh, the average uh, stability index and their financial ratings, okay? it rates from one to five, one is the highest and five is the lowest. So if you're a new investor, uh, you wanna stick with the ratings of one and two, okay? There are 1700 stocks in value line and there's 100 that are rated number one, 300 that are rated number two, 900 that are rated number three, and 300 rated four and 100 uh, is five, okay? The green box, timeliness. Johnson Johnson is rated not, uh, ranked number two. It was upgraded on 1023. So what does it mean uh, when you're ranked number two? The, it means that there's another 299 stocks that is also ranked um, number two. Okay, the purple box. We're going to talk about the financial strength. Uh, financial strength for Johnson & Johnson is A++. Now there are nine grades. There's A++, A+, A, B++, B+, B, C++, C+, and C. The lowest grade is reserved for company with financial difficulties. Um, so the lowest grade is the C, okay? Um, if you look here, uh, if you look at the total sales in that purple box, you'll see that the sales are increasing, which is good. The cash flow is increasing and the debt is going down. 
the return on capital is going up and the return to the shareholders equity is going up. Operation margin is up. Cash flow is very, very important. And you can compare that to your own personal uh, situation. Having a good cash flow uh, really could, can uh, make you be able to maneuver whatever financial situation you're in. Um, okay. And also I wanna mention that Johnson & Johnson is one, there's only two companies that are triple A rated in the United States. Johnson Johnson is one of them. The other one is Microsoft. Next slide. Okay. So what I want to show on this screen is that if you click on the show, uh, and then it's going to show the uh, definition. Okay, the rating and definition. Okay, next screen. Uh, and then you can see the next slide if you want to hide it. You click on the high button and it goes away. Next screen. Okay, so we're going to scroll down a little bit and talk about the commentary and the three to five year projections. Um, what you want to look at is does those numbers, do you like those numbers? Do you like what the numbers are telling you? You need to form your own opinion. Under the commentary, there's about 400 words in here, uh, and you can click on more. Now that's that green arrow, and it'll uh, expand. Okay. Now that blue arrow uh, records the ranking and the and the rank and rating changes. Uh, forms the technical to timeliness and earnings predictability. Next screen. Okay, so here is the supplementary report. Um, people says, what should I read? I said, read it all. <laughs> you will get a better view of the company. Um, the last report was a very positive report. Now, mid-year, uh, it was not so positive. Now, what's nice about the online version, it gives you access to the historical reports. The hard copy, you only have the most current report. Okay, next screen, devaluation. Um, this is per share uh, data. I'll review the data and compare the data. And I wanted to I'll point out to you that the italic means that uh, it is a projected estimate. So if you see it bold and italic, um, it is an estimate. So when you look at these numbers, you wanna compare it and say, do you see things that the company is doing right? Um, dividend has been increasing since 1963. What does that mean to you? Are you, are you a person who is looking for income? Um, uh, so giving uh, dividend data of $50 a month investment for 25, 24 years is 14,400 but it generated $22,000 of dividend. So reinvesting the dividend in your J&J &J stock gives you a value of 190,000, okay? Now, I also wanna say that if you don't understand everything, go to the investment education and there's a glossary there too. So if there's a definition that you don't understand, you can always use that to help you, to give you uh, a better understanding. Okay. Now, the one thing that I notice in here is that the long term is growing. Okay. Uh, and why is it growing? It's growing because the company sees that to borrow money, the interest rate is very low. So they're going to take advantage of using borrow money. Next screen. Um, that this is sales and graph. Okay. Uh, again, uh, a reminder that the italics are estimated projection. Uh, total return with the competitors, check them out over here on the right-hand side. Um, you want to verify, you want to check those companies out too, if they look interesting. <coughs> Excuse me. 
verify that you're buying the best company in the industry. Um, next screen. Um, I'm, I'm the person that's more interested in future growth. Uh, past performance is already priced into the stock. So Johnson & Johnson is a large company and, and it's actually like a mega company. Um, and so general expectation, expectation is about 7% for a large company. Small companies are more agile, but their finances are not as robust. So J&J &J is a global company. It operates in over 120 companies. Have a strong, having a strong or weak dollars will have an effect on their bottom line. Okay, now what I wanna point out to you here in the screen is that in the orange box, you see this great spike in the adjusted earnings. It went from 685 to uh, 8, 868. And this was because of a tax issue uh, and they made the correction, but value line also chose not to go back and correct it. So going forward, uh, they will use the new way of calculating the income. So it just looks like an anomaly there. Okay, so let's look at the dividends. Uh, six to eight and a half percent in dividends. So the question is if you can get your money to increase six to eight percent, you need to compare um, how many raises are you getting that is in the six to eight percent raises. Uh, so this is about using your money and making it work hard for you. Uh, last year, Social Security increase was um, about two percent. So uh, a average of seven and a half percent increase looks pretty good with the history they can, and they can sustain their increases. Um, okay. okay. This is the score rating here in this red box. Uh, add up the numbers, add up the scores. And if it's 200 or more, uh, you can go forward and do some more research. If it doesn't add up to 200, um, I would say pass, especially if you're a new investor. Um, I got this tip reading uh, from the Better Investing Magazine, and it was a letter written to the editor. It was a great idea, and it's a time saver for screening stocks. I like earning predictabilities near 100 or 100, uh, if the price stability is lower, it means it will be buying opportunities uh, for me. So that's the idea of buying on the dip. Okay. So we scroll down a little bit more. Uh, we're talking about industry data. Um, click on that that says read more. And this is uh, a must read get the insight about the industry that J&J &J is in, okay? The teal box, uh, inside transactions. This informs you who is buying and selling in upper management. This data used to take 30 days, but now with technology, it only takes a couple of days uh, before we know. So as you can also see that over in the red box, that, the, that many mutual funds and pension funds owns J&J. &J. It's about 60 to 70%. There's only a problem if the market crash. People call up for redemption and this may cause tax issues and valuation flux in, in the short term. Okay. Uh, next screen. Okay, the business description. Um, so you have the business description, and right next to it is the business history, and there isn't any history. So therefore, you have to go to the Johnson and Johnson website to, and they have a, <clears throat> a big section on their history. <clears throat> uh, okay, the technical ranking. Okay. If you click on the show, it'll display the history of the technical ranking. 
okay? And over here on the right-hand side, the value line report, value line PDF report, okay? Um, it lists out two years of reports uh, and we, we're gonna stop at this juncture and then we're gonna uh, review the hard copy. Is there any questions? Yes, there's questions, Harry. We've got a few, one from the very beginning. You had mentioned a few brokerage firms, Fidelity, and what was the other one? Uh, Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab, okay. And then someone also asked on the j, &J page, where's the future PE listed? Uh, future PE? Yeah, so we saw the the uh, the trailing and uh, the the patron wondered where the future one was listed. Okay, could I hold that off until we get to the hard copy? Of course. Uh, okay. Next question is, uh, and a couple more. What is the definition of timeliness? Timeliness. Uh, the they have the it is a value line ranking, and they uh, timeliness means that you know there's a lot of interest in the stock. There's only a hundred, okay. But the thing about the timeliness, if you go to the education tab and read about timeliness, you'll find that the timeliness says that the stock is usually volatile and um, more volatile than usual. So, um, and if it's timely um, and it's ranked number one, that means a lot of people have been buying the stock. So it tends to be on the high side, you know? So. And you have to decide, do I want to go in now or do I want to watch it? And so a lot of times I says, if you think it's too high, watch it. Watch it for a couple of weeks and see what happens. Yeah. Got it. And one more, Harriet, and then I'm sure there'll be more later. But what is considered a good P.E. ratio? What range should we look for? <clears throat> OK. The, if you look at the S&P 500, the five, 500 largest company in the United States, uh, the PE ratio right now is about 16, okay? Um, now, it, it, and so we're talking about growth companies, the largest companies, they're about 15 or 16. It's different if it are cyclical companies. You know, when they're cyclical company, um, they go up and down and you have to um, take that into consideration. Um, now, Growth companies, um, I would I would say, okay. The other thing about PE, what's a good PE ratio? If they have a PE ratio, it is a good thing. Right now in the stock market, a lot of com a lot of people are investing or speculating in stocks that does not make an earnings. So that's you need to be careful of. So uh, the criteria was is that they at least are making money. It used to be that a company would not IPO until they have proven that they could have uh, made a profit for five years in a row. And that was back in the 1980s. Um, with the onset of the internet, uh, there was this company called Netscape and they were competing and they felt the pressure. So they IPO'd without proving that they had made money. And what was surprising was that it was so successful. And that opened the floodgates for all the companies. And so a lot of companies, they will do the initial public offering without proving that they, they can make money. So um, a little, it's a little bit more dangerous now, I think. So fundamental analysis always looks at the books to say, how well are you doing? So I think that's important. I hope that answered the question. Okay, we're just about to proceed with the print version. There was a question about the slides. We will send those. Um, it's a large file. So I hope everybody's able to receive them, but we will do our best with our, we always send the follow-up email. We will attempt to send them out. And uh, thank you everyone for your questions. Oh, there's one more question. Where would one look to determine the type of company it is, growth or cyclical, et cetera? Uh, let me, um, we're gonna get to the hard copy, okay, at the next screen and I'll, I'll talk about that, 
Okay. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so next screen. This is the hard copy. It's of the value line on a company, one page, fits on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. This is what, uh, so the new format, the online format is much easier on the eye. Um, the hard copy, I have to say, format in the beginning was very, very intimidating. It was very stressful, but in time, I think I figured out this page. Um, discipline, perseverance, and patience. Okay, next screen. So this is the top half. And so uh, there was a question about the PE. Okay, so on the orange square there, there's just the PE. So it gives you the PE of 18.7 and it says trailing and median. Okay, um, value line does something unique. So how they calculate the, the PE, they use six months of historical data and six months um, projected earnings data. So that's unique to value line. But so you, so you can see the trailing uh, is, uh, oh, if I remember right, it's like last 10 years and the medium is, is also 10 years. So, um, what was the question on the PE about how you could figure that out? Um, the question was, I think they were wondering where the future PE was listed. Oh, okay, okay. Hold, hold on, okay. Um, okay, so then in the red square, you have the timeliness, the safety, okay? And then uh, what's really interesting is the orange box under that, um, it gives you an 18 month target range. So the 18 target uh, range, it says that the midpoint is 171. So I find it very interesting that the uh, Johnson & Johnson today, uh, which is 18 months um, later, uh, since October of 2020, we're at 177. So they're pretty much on target, okay? Um, underneath that is the, what they're projecting for 2023. They think the high price will be 230 and the low price will be at 190. Um, so we're lo looking at a 9% or, or a 15% increase. Okay. So in the yellow box, uh, this is the per share information. Um, and down on the lower half of that yellow is the company data. Now, the online version kind of mesh them together. So the hard copy uh, breaks them out per share on top and the company data uh, down on the bottom. Okay, so next screen. So um, here, the annual rates. So this um, annual rates estimated 223. Uh, many years ago, Value Line was the only company that gave you an estimate of what the future sales and earnings and dividend was. Today, that's very different. Today, um, every brokerage firm um, has it. Um, and for better investing, we have a tool and we get data from Zach, from Yahoo, from Mike, from Morningstar that give you an estimate. And of course, your brokerage firm gives it to you. So right off um, the bat, you can get an estimate from six different resources. Okay. So uh, in that orange box here, where it says annual rates, that first box, Okay, so sales are going to grow um, 5%. Cash flow is going to grow 8.5%. Earnings, they think they were going to grow 10%. Dividend is going to grow 7.5%. Okay. Um, so how do you figure out that PE? So if you give the earnings, okay, and it's going to grow by 10%. So this is where you have to do the math. Okay. So... Um, and then if you look at the earnings 
in that same orange box. It's the third one down. So in 2021, they're estimating that the sales will be $9. Okay. And so if you multiply that by, uh, if we go back to a previous screen uh, and look at the PE ratio 18.7 up on top, okay. So if you times that 18.7 times nine, you get a number and you say, do I like that number? So again, like I said, third grade math is really all you need to figure out the numbers, okay? Let's go back to the next page. So <clears throat> now over here on the right-hand side, the company financial strength, um, it's an A++. This is where I talked about you know, you add up the numbers and if it's 200, you do more research. If it does not add up to 200, you should pass, especially if you're a new beginner, because what you want is a quality company that makes money. Okay. Um, okay. And also to the left of that um, financial strength numbers, it's footnotes. The smaller the print, the more important you should read it. <laughs> um, it's, it's very interesting. So uh, you'd be amazed. Uh, okay. Now, so everything that I had talked about, uh, the online version, okay, is on the hard copy on one page. And it really does take a lot of time to digest it. So I really recommend that you go back to the investment education and go through that. Like I said before, when I was teaching this class, it usually took three to four hours to teach this class. So, okay. So I wanna go back and then mention the Dow Jones 30. Um, it's available for free. And when you sign on on the front page, you see it. Dow Jones 30. This is the listing of 30 stock, large company that usually have liquidity and is profitable. It is a really good place to start looking for a quality company. Okay. Okay. Now, next screen. Okay. So this is the Dow 30. Okay. So let's go back to the front page. Next screen. Okay, so a lot of people have asked just like, how do I use value line? So when you log on here, what I usually use is the dashboard and find idea tab. Okay, so you can go there and look at preset screens. Next slide. Okay. Okay, so when you go to the fine ideas, um, over to the left-hand side, you're gonna see a thing called screeners, okay? So when you click on that, you'll get to this stock screener uh, page. So Value Line has a whole bunch of screens that you can look at, different kinds of stuff. If you're looking for growth stock or you're looking at uh, banking stocks. So, so there's all kinds of things that you can select and poke around with. Now, what I kind of did was I scrolled down um, and I clicked on the conservative st stocks, ranked number one for relative safety. So you can go poke around here. And so actually give yourself some time, allocate some time so you can go in and take a look. So the reason why I pick the conservative stocks ranked number one for relative safety is that I think that a good way of looking at it when you're new in investing, you might say you wanna buy a stock for your grandmother. You want it to be safe. You want her to earn some money, but you want it to be safe, okay? Protecting the principal. So here, if you look at the stock screener, there's the safety ranking, right? So you can click on one and it'll give you a list of stocks. Next screen. 
okay? Okay, so, um, and then if I want to see the ranking, I can click on that. And the online version, there's a lot of data on the screen. So you kind of have to scroll to the left or scroll to the right. Um, but there is a lot of data. And simply because there's just a lot more white space. So it's not cramped, all crammed in. Um, so it's kind of um, nice. It's visually is easier on the eyes. Okay. So here is the ranking, uh, rating and ranks. Next screen. Okay, so you can see uh, in the red box, you know, this data in there, and you need to scroll to the left if you want to see it. Um, the technical ranking, the earnings predictability, the price growth persistent, and the price stability information is presented. Next screen. So the estimate, now here I just decided to click on the estimate and projection, okay? So that kind of gives you an idea of uh, what the estimate and projection category looks like. So it needs, you need to allocate some time so you can digest all of this, okay? If you have a touch screen, you can touch your, your computer to slide the data over. If not, you have to go to the bottom of the page and use the scroll bar, okay? So um, safety ranking, here we go. The estimate and projection, okay? Um, so, you know, it gives you things, what they're gonna, uh, what they think the annual pr projection for the annual total return is going to be, what the dividend growth will be. So, you know, if you find something interesting, um, you know, well, here's one, you know, like uh, automatic data processing. Uh, the dividend growth is going to be 10.5%. Apple uh, pro is projecting uh, the dividend growth rate to be 15 and a half percent. So that's very interesting. Um, so again, it's interesting to me because I am looking for dividend income. So it may not appeal to you if you're not, okay? But nevertheless, the data is there. So you can check that out. Okay. Next screen, the profitability. So the own function of a business is to make money, okay? Uh, so this kind of gives you the information about the operating margins, uh, the percentage, the percentage of the profit margin. So you can see here for Apple and for Abbott Labs what they are, okay? Right now in the beginning, you may not um, know whether or have an opinion, but in time, after you look at these things again and again, and you see different companies and different uh, industry sector, it, you, you will start to have an opinion, okay? Next screen. Uh, the next category is the annual rates. So this gives you the sales growth rate, the sales for the five-year growth rate, and the estimate for one-year growth rate and the estimate for five years. So if you're a long-term investor, you might be looking at the five years much more than you were looking at the one year. Okay. So here, the last category is industry. Okay. So information listed in the, in the company name, the ticker, the industry, the inventory turnover, uh, the percent change in retail sales. There's a lot of information. So you need to be patient with yourself and give yourself time to absorb the data. So you really need to allocate and develop a schedule or find families and friends to make it easy uh, and okay to talk about investing. Okay, so. Um, any, do we have any more question here? I don't see any for now, Harriet. Okay, good. Okay. So try to match up where you are. 
Okay, so here is next screen. Okay, next screen, next slide. Okay, this is the, I uh, wanna talk a little bit about the hard copy. Um, so this is the, what they call the summary and index page. Uh, so when you check it out at the library from the reference desk, this is the front page. And so you could see right there on the top half, it says screens. So there's things that if you're interested in timely stocks, or high dividend stock if you're looking for companies, uh, or you're looking for stocks from three to five year price potential, uh, the best performing stocks in the last 13 weeks, or the, the worst performing stock in the last 13 weeks, stocks with high PE, stocks with low PE, um, stocks that has three to five year dividend yield. So there's a lot of screens that you can take a look at. So the question you need to ask is, what are you interested? In? And so uh, once you figure that out, you know, um, I use it a lot, especially if I'm thinking and looking for a dividend stock um, or I'm looking for growth stock. Uh, this screens really appeal to me. Uh, it will take some time for you to understand what's on this page because there's a lot of data. Um, like here on the right hand side, where it says the median estimated 18 month appreciation potential is 15%. So right in there, when you look at this, 15%, um, that tells me that the market at that time is pretty high. So it only has a 15% 15, 15 potential of uh, appreciation. So all these numbers eventually, when you get through with them, uh, will start to make sense. Now the bottom half, okay, next screen. The bottom half is a listing of the industry. There are 96 industry. And so which, what we recommend is that you just stay in the top 30s, okay? Um, uh, it's just that the, there will be enough company out of 1,700 in the top third that it would, you'll be, it would be enough material to do research, okay? Now, the online version, if you scroll down, you will get to the next slide. So you could see that it's on page two. So what it is, is what they did online was it just become a long, long file and you can scroll. So here on page two, you would get the index to the stocks and it listed in alphabetical order. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, sorry, having a little bit of difficulty here. Technical difficulty. Okay. Can you still hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Because uh, I think I lost. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so then the next screen, uh, I wanted to show you the bottom of the page and again there are footnotes take the time to read them okay um next slide same thing read a, read the different footnotes that they have in there okay next screen okay so this is the last page so see over on the right hand side it says page 23 WY to ZY. So this is the ending of the list. Okay. Next screen. Um, I wanted to show you the three to five year potential. That's on page 36. So you can go through that. Um, so again, that would be uh, the online version to get to this, you would go into the fine ideas. Okay, there's a lot of information. Um, just give yourself some time. We're almost done. Okay. I want to tell you something about Value Line. Value Line was, uh, it began in 1931. Uh, next slide. Um, during the Depression. 
It was developed as a method for evaluating stocks uh, in 1965. Next screen. OK. Um, they developed the timeliness ranking system. They have 70 analysts. And all the numbers and value lines are developed by the analysts. Um, Arno Barnhart started the company and he wanted to help the small investor gain access to financial information that previously was only available to institution and wealthy investor. So thank you, Arno. <laughs> okay, so um, value line is published weekly and it covers 1700 stocks and 96 industry. Okay. Um, so companies are categorized into industry and each page is revised every 13 weeks. And then the cycle begins uh, with their updated data. In between, they also will issue supplemental reports if needed. Okay, so in summary, okay, you can get uh, the San Francisco Public Library. You can apply it online, but you must go in um, one time visit and then you have access to value line. Um, so that's it. Thank you for attending. Um, if you're interested, uh, Better Investing do have a 90 day free membership. Uh, no credit card information is required. And tomorrow I will be teaching a dividend reinvesting class. So I hope you can attend that. Any questions? I made it I, in an hour. <laughs> I made it in an hour. That was, yeah. that was excellent. I don't see any questions on my side. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see anything. And um, so everybody look for an email from us later this afternoon. Um, it's a big file, all these slides. So hopefully it'll go out there to everybody without any problems. You can always uh, send us an email at bizsidetech at sfpl.org. If you don't receive it, we'll, we'll try and fix it. Um, tomorrow at 3 p.m., Dividends Investing for Beginners. Harriet Chan will be teaching that, and I will include a link in the email for those of you that haven't already registered. I want to thank everyone for coming today. And as always, you know, we're your library. We're here for you. So join us anytime. Uh, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Harriet. Thank you, JP. Okay, thank you. So bye. Long. Okay, bye bye.